This is the final part of Wendy's awesome project management dashboard. In the previous videos, we have built an interactive project Gantt chart as well as project status charts. In this video, we will conclude the dashboard by building other tiles and bringing everything together. This is going to be epic. Let's go. Because there are a lot of moving parts in the project dashboard, this is the order in which we will tackle. We will first understand the basic colors, icons and the font choices that you can make when you are designing the dashboard. Then we will understand how to construct a dynamic upcoming activities or issues table. Then we will figure out how to create all of these tiles on the top that show various information about the project. Then we will add an interactive Gantt chart to the project. This is already constructed. So we'll just have to bring it over so that I can see my project plan by either team. And finally, we will load up our resource allocation chart so that I can see how each of our employees are working. Are you excited? Let's go. These are the colors and fonts and icons that I will be using. You can decide on the color scheme upfront or go along and do it. I like to decide these colors upfront so that I'm not looking for a make looking to make decisions when I'm building the dashboard. So these are the colors I went with. You I used uh, most of the basic colors that are already in the Excel theme, but I have added these two colors to showcase my resource allocation. When it comes to fonts, I prefer to keep them to a minimum of two or three. So in this situation, I'm only using Open Sans Extra Bold for my headings and everything else is the default Excel font of Calibri. Icons can be very useful to add some level of detail to your dashboards. Here I'm using these icons and you can get these icons for free within Excel. All you have to do is go to the insert ribbon and click on the icon button and from here you can load up the icons. Finally, I made up a logo to depict our project. Now that we got all our creative stuff done, let's go ahead and bring all of this together into the dashboard. Oh, hello there. This is Wendy. You can download the project dashboard from the video description links below. Check it out. So we will add a new worksheet, name it dashboard. So we'll place our logo and the title of the project along with status dashboard wording. You can just type them in these text boxes and lay them out. We will add these styles in a minute, but for now we need to set up an area where we can show upcoming activities and our people data. Next, let's go ahead and disable the grid lines on this dashboard so that it looks clean. So we will go and remove the grid lines. Now, before we jump into any of the calculation stuff, uh, let me introduce you a new table, the issue table. Here I've got some issues that are happening in the project and they are assigned to certain people. They'll have some priority, a date on which the issue has been opened. And if the issue is closed, then a closing date. This is quite common in projects to have certain issue trackers like this. And we will use this issues table. It is named issues. And I'm just going to quickly go to the relationships button and link up my issues table with my person table. So we'll make a new relationship issues assigned to is people person. This way we can also use this table in our pivot reports and elsewhere as well. Now let's start thinking about loading the information here for upcoming activities or issues. We need a switch to select either activities or issues. You can use from your developer ribbon a form control to set these up. Alternatively, you could also use a slicer or data validation. Let's try the form control and set it up. This will give you a choice to pick items. Now this is blank because we haven't set it up. So we will go to our calculations worksheet and set up the choices here first. The choices are activities and issues. We'll come back to the dashboard, right click on this, go to format control and where it says input range, navigate to the choices that you have set up and link that up. And then where it says cell link, if 
for now i'm just going to link it to a cell here you can see the behavior so when i select activities i'll get one in this cell and when i select issues i will see two in the cell now let's go ahead and clear this up and I'm going to link this to a cell in my calculations worksheet. So I'll go to the calculation and let's just link it to this particular cell J8 there. This way any selection that I make I can monitor the value in the calculation worksheet. So now that all of this is done let's go ahead and calculate upcoming activities and upcoming issues. This is time for us to write some serious formulas. For the purpose of this dashboard, let's say we want to show upcoming 10 activities. That means the start date of these activities should be after today. And we just want to show the 10 activities. If there are like 200 activities, we'll just limit it to 10. So to do this, we do need the current date, the today date. We will set it up in a cell so that we can refer to this all the time. And then we will just say today as a formula for that. Now we could use the filter function to do this filter activities table. Remember, this is the table where all our data is maintained. And then we can say activities start date is greater than that value I six. And when you close the bracket, you will get all such activities who have a start date after today. Now, as I said, we just want to see 10 activities, not everything in this list. So what I can then do is I can send this to the index function and just get the first 10 rows. So we'll just say sequence 10. This will kind of limit the number of rows that index will return. So it will just give you the first 10 rows. OK, but what it also just does is it will only give me the activity ID. We, we do want to see category and start date as well. So let's go ahead and see where that information is. If you look at the activity table, activity is column number one, category is two, and start date is column number four. So we want to read column one, two, and four. This is when instead of just saying sequence 10, we will, if I specify the column numbers as well, one, two, and four in curly brackets, I will get that information. You don't have to use the filter function. Filter function tends to be the easier one to use. But you can also use any other formula in Excel that you're comfortable with to get this information. So we will just uh, do some quick formatting for that. And that is my upcoming activities. Let's create a similar thing for upcoming issues. Now I have both my upcoming activities and issues information in the spreadsheet. And I also know what my audience want. They want to see the activities. So let's go ahead and fetch one of these two issues and print them in this area. Here I can use if formula. If this value in J8 is equal to one, then I want that else I want this. And we'll get everything that we need in this table. This table is dynamic. So if this number becomes two, then this will show me the upcoming issues information. We can then take this control C, go to the dashboard, right click and paste this as a reference. Let's do some quick formatting. Our upcoming activities or issues information is ready. I can pick one of these two and it will show up nicely in the dashboard. Time to figure out how to set up the styles on the dashboard. For these tiles, we will use this colored box, a rounded rectangle, and then we will print the icon as well as the actual value on top of it. There will be four tiles, project status, how many days are left till the project completion, how many activities are ongoing, and how many issues are pending. Let's add some titles on these boxes. and Let's also bring those icons here. Let us load up the status icon here. We have already done this part in the previous video. So I'm just going to get that and print it here. Control C, Control V. Next, we need to calculate the number of days to go activities ongoing and active issues and bring those numbers over into the dashboard. Let's do that bit. So we need to calculate three types of numbers. Number one, how many days are there until the end of the project? Number two, how many activities are ongoing? And finally, how many issues are active. Let's calculate these things. Days left is 
the gap from today until the maximum end date in the project data worksheet. So we can, for example, get the maximum activities end date. And this would give us when is the last activity finishing in the project. So it is 7th of uh, July 2021. And if I subtract today from this, that is how many days we have. 42 days. For ongoing activities, we will use countifs function. So countifs activities start date is before today. That means the activity has already started, but the percentage done is less than one. So that means it has not reached 100% completion. So whatever is the satisfying those two conditions that we can consider as ongoing activities. And there are 37 of those. For active issues, we can use another countifs function. This time we will simply look at a date closed on the issue and if it is blank, then we will say that that issue has not closed. Now that our calculations are done, let's go ahead and load up these numbers into the dashboard. We'll go to the dashboard, insert a text box here, and then we will just say this text box should be equal to my days left calculation there. Let's quickly adjust the formatting. And once you're happy with the formatting of this, you can just copy paste the same but change the references so that all the information shows up on the dashboard. Now let's go ahead and get our Gantt chart and load it up here. To do that, just go to your Gantt chart and pick a big enough range to load up in the dashboard. You don't have to load the entire Gantt chart, just load enough rows and columns so that it does give you a context of what's happening in the project. But if somebody needs more information, they can always navigate to the Gantt chart tab. So select this, control C, copy, go to the dashboard, right click and select the linked picture option. This will give you a live snapshot of the Gantt chart here as a picture. Because this is a picture, I can adjust its size and fit it into my layout. If you see some extra space on here or at the bottom, just readjust the picture input range so that it will fit. Now let's go ahead and add a picture border around this. You can do this from picture format, picture border. Finally, let us make this interactive by bringing in that slicer on the Gantt chart over to this page. Go to your Gantt chart, click on the slicer, control exit and paste it here in the dashboard. So now you have an interactive Gantt chart, you have an upcoming activities and issues table, you got all your tiles. Only bit remaining is our people and how much work they are doing. To make this, we need to construct a pivot table. So let's do that first. Whoa, not that kind of table, man. The ones that you make in Excel. We'll go back to our calculations worksheet and find some empty space and add a pivot table. Just say insert pivot table and this will default to your data model. We have our people, issues and activities tables there. Let's load the people names into the row label area and let us see how many issues are assigned to them and how many activities are assigned to them. So I can see how much work each of them are doing. And if you want, you can kind of sort this on anything. I'm not going to sort. I'll just disable any totals on this pivot table. So we only have this data. Now copy the, your pivot table data, control C, go to the dashboard, right click and paste it as a link. We'll get a live reference to that data in the dashboard. Let's add some headings here. And finally, apply some conditional formatting data bars of two different colors, one for issues, one for activities. And there you go. Our project mega something status board is now complete. We can interact with it. We can see it. We can change the data and see all of these changes appear here. So for example, if I were to add some additional activities or change their due dates, they will all appear in the dashboard as soon as I hit the refresh button. So for example, here I got some additional activities with their start dates and completion information. And if I copy this 
add it at the end of my activities table and then go to the dashboard you can already see that some of these numbers have changed because they are formulas but for everything to change we just need to refresh all and that will update these graphs and add some additional issues and everything else to the dashboard i hope you found this whole exercise of constructing project management dashboard in excel very useful and instructional if you enjoyed this video series please give it a thumbs up and tell me in the comments what are some of the best things that you have learned if you would like to learn more about other aspects of excel check out this video that is linked on the screen and improve your excel game see you again elsewhere bye bye